Welcome back to another video from the Mathnasium. Today, we're going to be doing compound, compound inequalities. Now, a compound inequality is when you have inequalities working together. I'm not going to go into too much detail because first, I have a little segue I would like to highlight. So bear with me here. Let's remember, why are inequalities useful? What do they do for us, right? If I say Mr. Slagle has at least $5 in his pocket, if I have at least $5 in my pocket, what does that mean? What are acceptable possible amounts in my pocket? So if I, if I have if x is at least 5, right, what does that mean? Uh, I could have 5, I could have 6, I could have 7. At least actually means greater than or equal to, okay? We verbally use inequalities all the time. And what inequalities do is they don't describe a single value. They actually describe an entire range of values that we might be interested in, right? We could be interested in everything bigger than five. We might be interesting, interested in everything less than five, right? Okay? Inequalities describe a range of values, and that works really well for us. There's other ways to do it. You can describe an inequality. Um, this, this one here would be x's less than five, right? Um, there's other ways that you can do this. Um, namely, there's this thing called interval notation, and I'm going to go over that on Monday in more detail. We're going to practice. But interval notation is one way to describe a set of values, um, and you can do that by writing the lowest thing, comma, the highest thing, right? And we'll, we'll go to that more later. Okay, so inequalities are useful because they describe a range of values. And in, in things like computer programming, you use this all the time. You use this all the time. So describing a range of values. So my question to you is how would you, right before we talked about basic inequalities, how would you describe something like this? Say this is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, we want to describe a range of values. This is a range of values. How do I describe this? How is this possible? Well, we got a problem. There is no way to describe the region that I've just shaded with what we currently know. So that means we need to expand on our knowledge. We need to expand on what we can do. And so um, in order to describe this set of numbers, the only way to describe it is to use two inequalities. Okay, And so you'd say, I want numbers. I'm interested in the numbers that are sim simultaneously bigger than negative 3, but at the same time are less than 0. But greater than or equal to negative 3, but are the same time I need numbers that are less than zero. Does this make sense? So in order to describe this set of numbers, or this interval of numbers, we need two inequalities. And it turns out that there are um, other things that you can run into. This turns out to be something called an and inequality. It's called an and inequality because we look at the overlap we look at the overlap between the two inequalities, right? Where do they overlap? They overlap at this point because this point is included. And they don't overlap here because that point's not, but they overlap everywhere uh, in between. This point's not included, so they don't overlap here. Okay, does this make sense? And means overlap. Where do these two things overlap? Okay, fantastic. How are we going to describe what if instead I gave you um, 
something like this. Okay, what if instead I gave you something like this? How would you describe these, right? With this one we said, we're looking for where it's greater than negative three and, and less than zero. But here we wouldn't say, we'd say, the numbers that we're interested in are, let's say one, two, three, four, five, okay? The numbers that we are interested in here are the numbers that are either, let's see, we're looking for the numbers that are less than one, but numbers that are also greater than or equal to five, okay? So when I said that, notice how I said we're looking, for, so for something to be a solution here, for something to be one of the shaded numbers, numbers that are acceptable are numbers that are less than one, and then I said or verbally, I said or they can be um, greater than or equal to five. So this is this, the other type of compound inequality that we're gonna deal with in this class. There are and inequalities and there are or inequalities, okay? Or really means kind of everything is included. So when I say or, I want you to think everything, everything from both inequalities is included and is the overlap. Um, Megan, did you need something? No. Okay. So, and inequalities are always used, are typically used to describe a set of, you know, that has two endpoints, right? It looks like a, it looks like you have a dot and then stuff shaded in between then a dot. That is an and compound inequality. When you have um, your solution is going one direction or the other like this, where they're shaded on opposite sides and there's a gap in the middle, that is an or inequality. So what you're gonna do um, for the notes for this lesson is after this little introduction, I want you to kind of split your notes um, down your page in two. So on, a bl on your next sheet of paper, you can go to a blank page. I want you to just draw a line like this Everything that's on the left is going to be and examples. I'm just going to do a bunch of examples of and inequalities. And everything that's on the right is going to be or inequalities. And you're just going to do a bunch of them. Um, even So you're going to fill up the left side. You may even go on to another page that you're going to split in half before you start writing on the right hand side. So let's get started. Okay, compound inequality. Use it, it, Compound inequality is just an inequality that you use more than one inequality inequality to describe a solution set. So I'm going to do these really quickly um, and talk about labeling the scale um, on the graph. We're looking for numbers that are bigger than 5 and less than 12. I bet verbally you can find a number that is both simultaneously greater than 5 and less than 12. 6 is an acceptable example, 7, 8, but so are all the numbers in between. 5.5 is bigger than 5 and less than 12. 5.1 is bigger than 5 and less than 12. 5.0000000001 is bigger than 5 and less than 12. Now, if you count on here 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they're just barely going to fit. So I might actually count by 2. So let's do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, whatever. Let's come up and let's get graphing. So how do we figure out this and inequality? What do we do here? We're looking for things that are, and I'm gonna do this one in purple, things that are bigger than five. I'm, now, I'm gonna do a little kind of graph here above. Bigger than five is an open circle above five and shaded numbers that are bigger than five are this direction. And then in red, I'll do this next one. Where are things less than 12? Things that are less than 12 are right here and going this direction. Okay. And remember I said and means overlap. So where do our two solutions overlap? Well, they don't overlap at the end point here because it's an open circle. So, um, but they overlap everywhere in between. So that it's an open circle there, 
an open circle here and we shade everything in the middle. Okay, that's typically what we're going on. Now, and, and compound inequalities can be written in two ways. Or inequalities are always written with the word or. Sometimes and inequalities say the word and, and then sometimes they're written slightly differently. They're written kind of like this. It turns out this is kind of shorthand. You know how we say, like, instead of saying can't, can not, sometimes we say can't, we can contract the word and make it smaller. And mathematics will do the same thing. We'll say, all right, x is greater than 5 can be flipped around, right? Saying x is greater than 5 is the same thing as saying 5 is less than x, right? And so what we can do here is kind of flip, flip that around, and you keep this one the same, right? You keep this one the same direction. And what it allows us to do is someone said, hey, look, saying 5 is less than x and x is less than 12, why don't we just, this is like re very, what's the word, repetitious. We're repeating ourselves, just like saying cannot, right? It's kind of difficult to write. We can speed things up. So someone came up with this brilliant idea to merge that in and just say, let's just put an x there, a 12 on the right, and a 5 on the left, right? So we can see that our lower bound is over here on the left-hand side. So this is the lowest thing, and it goes up to the highest thing. And then you just have less than or less than or equals to is present. Okay, so a compound and inequality, and inequality can be written like this as well. And many of your problems on your assignment are going to look like this. So anytime you see an inequality that looks like this, just know that that is a compound and inequality. Let's do a couple more examples. Okay, you guys can try it and graph this on your own if you'd like, um, or you can see me do it. Either one's fine, try it by yourself. Think about the numbers that's, that are both less than three and x is greater than or equal to negative two. So I'm gonna do these um, kind of in two ways. So I'm gonna think about this one first. What is that, what is x, negative two is less than or equal to x look like? I'm gonna flip that around and think about it as x is greater than or equal to negative two. So I'm gonna come down here. Um, let me label my, my numbers really fast. So I'll put negative two right there, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. Three. Oops, sorry. Let's go back to green. Where are the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative two? We put a closed circle above negative two. This is my scratch work. This is not my answer. It's important to note that I only grade what's what's shaded on your number line. This is your scratch work and not your answer. All right, we're looking for numbers that are greater than negative two. We're also looking for numbers that are, the numbers need to be greater than negative two and they need to be less than three. And all the numbers that satisfy that are where these things overlap. So let's shade where they overlap. They overlap at this endpoint, so we put a closed circle. And they don't overlap here, so we put an open circle. But they overlap everywhere in between. Because this one is not included, so they don't overlap there. All right, and that's basically it. That's how you um, graph a compound inequality. But now, I'm going to do two more. Um, and I'm going to make these ones just a little bit more challenging. Um, sometimes we have to solve them in order to uh, in order to simplify them. So we're going to do almost exactly the same thing that we just did, and we're going to have to solve each one individually. So the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at this left group right here. So we're going to rewrite negative 4 is less than 2x plus 2. All right, and we're going to solve this. Solving, remember, an inequality. Solving an inequality is just like solving an equation. These two things are like terms, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. We'll get negative 6 is less than 2x. If we divide both sides by 2, we'll get negative 3 is less than x. Divide by 2, divide by 2, OK? Now remember, this is kind of facing a funky way. That can also be written as x is greater than negative 3. Now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat that same process again for the right comparison, just like I did here. x is greater than 3, x or sorry, x is less than 3, and x is greater than negative 2. So for the right comparison, that's 2x plus 2 is less than or equal to 2. And I'm just going to repeat the same steps I did before. I subtracted 2 first, 
and I got 2x is less than or equal to 0. Then I divide it by 2. x is less than or equal to 0 divided by 2 is 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph this. 0 is the bigger number, so we'll put 0 there. 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And it, once you get fast at this, guys, it, it really doesn't take that long. We're looking for numbers that are bigger than negative 3. That's an open. Oh, I should put a negative 4 on there. You typically want at least one number on either side of your shaded area, uh, at least one or two. All right, so it's, a, uh, it's an open circle on negative 3, right? Uh, let me, let's do the, I'll show the work the way that I did before. Open circle on negative 3, going to the right, closed circle on 0, going to the left, and we're interested in where they overlap. Where do they overlap? Why is that purple? It's going to confuse somebody. Where do they overlap? They overlap, that's an open circle. They don't overlap there, but they overlap immediately to the right. They do overlap there because that's a closed circle. We can shade everywhere in between, so there's our graph. Sweet. All right, you guys can try this one on your own. Be careful, there is a trick, and it has to do with a rule, a very important rule we learned in the last lesson. Hopefully you catch it. If not, I'm gonna do it here in just a sec. Okay, pause video, game time. We're doing this one first. Three is less than or equal to x divided by negative two plus one. Okay, let's go ahead and solve. This is a two-step, if this were a two-step equation, the first thing I would do would be to subtract one from both sides. So we'd get two is less than or equal to x over negative two, x over negative two. And to solve this, I wanna get x by itself. We're dividing by negative two, so to undo that, I'm going to multiply each side by negative two. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Negative two times negative two is negative four, but we have to remember there was a rule that I told you last time. When you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the inequality. These negative twos are gonna cancel, so you'll get x, or negative four is greater than or equal to x, or x is less than or equal to negative four, whichever one, um, whichever one makes the most sense to you, okay? All right, let's do the next one in blue. Remember, it's gonna follow the same processes, that, or the, it's the, the same solving steps that the previous example did. Okay, this time we're looking at four. Okay, so we'll subtract one from both sides and you'll get x over negative two is less than or equal to three. Multiply both sides by negative two and you'll get x is greater than or equal to negative six. Okay, now remember that can also be written as negative six is less than or equal to x. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna turn these into one compound inequality. We're gonna put x in the middle, they're both equal to, so we put less than, less than, and basically what I'm doing right here is I'm taking this inequality and I'm putting it right there, right? I know I kind of did a little shenanigans there, but I'm taking this one and I'm putting the, the lowest number on the left. The lowest number is negative six. And then I'm taking this inequality, oops. I'm taking this inequality and I'm putting it right here, right? So I'm putting the highest number on the, on the right, okay? So that looks like negative four. Negative four is bigger than negative six. All right, cool, and now we got a graph. What does this look like on our graph? Let's do that. Uh, so let's go by twos. Negative 10, negative 12, whoops, must be late. Negative 10, negative eight, negative six. Oh, I don't, we don't need to go by 12, so what are we doing? These are close, or go by twos, I'm tired you hopefully can tell. So we'll do negative eight, negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two. And 
Hopefully by now you don't need to do the scratch work part. You can say that's my lowest value and it's an open circle. Or sorry, closed circle. Okay, closed circle. Um, that's my highest value, so closed circle. And then shade everything in between. Cool. Because really, really remember, we're looking for where do these two things overlap. Those are our two inequalities. Where do they overlap? Perfect. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next ones are called OR inequalities. Now, OR inequalities are used to describe two intervals that are separated. Um, two intervals that are separated. So let's go ahead and graph these. So the rule for AND, um, the rule for AND was overlap. The rule for OR is, I usually just say, everything that is possible everything that it, everything that the inequalities touch is is part of our solution set right whereas in the previous example it was only where they overlapped this is everything or means everything so let's um, throw this on there uh, negative one zero one two three four okay so we are looking for in this example numbers that are greater than three three that's this we're also looking for numbers that are they can also they can be greater than three or or they can be less than or equal to zero both of those are fine so I graphed this inequality here and I graphed this inequality there now what we do is we just imagine them dropping down onto the number line and that's our answer so the work above doesn't necessarily you need to put your answers on the number line so numbers that are either greater than three or less than or equal to zero are currently graphed on the number line it's so everything that these that these um, touch whereas this is only where they overlap okay here we go you guys try this one on your own you're looking for the graph where things are negative two negative one zero one two three Okay, we're looking for things that are less than negative two, so I'll put a open circle going to the left, and that's this one. And in blue, we'll do this one. That's greater than negative one, which is right there. Okay, and everything that they touch is part of our solution, right? So. You just smack it down onto the number line. That one drops straight down on the number line and go this way. And that's it. Looking for numbers that are less than negative 2, or it's also OK if they're greater than negative 1. We've just shown you those numbers. Um, similar thing uh, with or. As with and, you can have or inequalities that um, can be expressed or, or that need solving. So in this case, um, to solve this, I'll come off onto the side. And we're going to use those rules that we learned before. Um, they're not the same, but that's okay. Plus 7. The steps won't be the same, but that's okay. So add 7 to both sides, divide by 2, x is greater than 2. So um, I'm not sure what the other number is yet, so let's wait because we might need to change the scale. Okay, solving this, I'm gonna, this is gonna be my blue inequality, negative three x minus four is greater than or equal to negative four. Um, add four to both sides, plus four. Negative three x is greater than or equal to zero, divide by negative three. And we have to, when we're dividing by a negative number, Zero divided by anything is zero. When we're dividing both sides by a negative number, we have to change the direction. So x is less than or equal to zero, which could also be written. Um, oh no, that's the correct direction, so that's fine. So zero and two. So these are pretty close. So let's number these. That'll be negative one, zero, one, two, three. It's good enough. Just throw a couple on. We're looking for things that are bigger than two. and things that are less than or equal to zero. Okay, 
So what's our solution? Everything that they touch, transition it down to the number line. Okay, cool. All right, we're now gonna look at a couple strange and quick examples uh, to wrap up this video and then we're gonna be done. Um, the next ones don't necessarily make sense in terms of real life examples, uh, but more so just for the super math nerds out there that want to exhaust every case. So in the real world, when you have ones like this, you go off in either direction, um, or so and inequalities are always that little tiny um, interval that's kind of packed together and or inequalities go off in different directions. But there are ones that are like this, this is a little strange. So what this is asking us to do is tell us graph where things are, let's see, 0, 1, 2, okay, right? Negative 1, negative 2, 3, throw a couple extra numbers. It's saying, I want you to graph where things are greater than 0. Any number that's greater than 0 or less than 2 is in our solution set. So if we look at this, any number that's greater than 0 or less than 2 is in our solution set. But I said or means everything, everything, right, that is in is included. So what's our solution in this situation? Well, in this situation, the solution is everything. Because if these were to if these were to fall down onto the line, every single number would be included. Or give me a number that's greater than zero or a number that's less than two, that's every possible real number. So yeah, anything would qualify. And this is another kind of strange example. Give me, um, give me a number that is greater than two. So we'll put two here. Three, four, five, one, zero. Negative one, negative two. Uh-oh, we're pushing the boundaries, whatever. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. Give me an example of a number that's bigger than two. Okay. And give me a number. It has to be bigger than two and it has to be less than four. Well, and means overlap. And these don't overlap, so our answer is no solution. There is no number that is simultaneously less than negative 4 and bigger than 2. Okay? So these are kind of some weird, weird cases. And is overlap, or is you just drop them down onto the line, but most of the, ca most of the cases and everything on your homework is going to look like something like this. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Algebra folks, you guys rock.